Welcome to the sixth class of the series on how to create a game using TypeScripts and 3.js. In this video, we will learn how to implement the shooting mechanic in the game. As always, this video takes the previous one as a starting point, and the source is available on the video description. Before writing code, we need to understand how shooting will work. When we press a certain key, the tank will create a bullet, which will travel on the tank direction until it hits something and it gets removed from the game. To implement this lifecycle, we will adjust the game entity class. The changes will make it easier to work with collisions and unload entities no longer needed. The first change is a property to identify the type of entity. This will help to code interactions in the future. For example, what happens when an entity of the type bullet collides with an entity of the type enemy. For now, we will use three values, a default general value, player and bullet. We will also update the constructor to receive the property as a parameter. If nothing is specified, the entity will take the default value. The second change is a property to indicate this entity is no longer needed and it should be removed from the scene. For example, once a bullet collides, we can remove the assets and free some resources. Finally, we will expose a method to be called before it gets removed. Here we will clean up resources and free some memory. We need to implement a function that allows us to add entities to the game scene dynamically. For example, when the tank shoots, we will create the bullet and then add it to the scene using this method. We also need a function that checks for entities that are no longer needed. If an entity indicates it has to be removed, the game scene will call its dispose method and remove it from the game. After we have removed it, we need to update the array to keep only valid entities. This method will get called on the render function, which occurs on every frame. We can now create a bullet class extending from the game entity. There will be a few differences this time. We need to know the angle to determine the travel direction and we will also call the parent constructor using the bullet entity type. The load method, just like other objects, will focus on loading the geometry and applying a material. This time, we will use a foam material to make the bullet a bit more interesting. The geometry is going to be a sphere. We will also create the collider for the bullet, which will also be a sphere. Notice this time I'm not cloning the position. This means if we update the mesh position, the collider position will be updated too. On the update method, we will code the movement of the bullet using the angle to determine its direction. The code is basically the same we did on the player tank. We will also work on collision detection to determine if the bullet has hit something and indicate it has to be removed if it did.
Remember we created our collider using the mesh position as a reference. Updating one will update the other as well. The collision detection algorithm is very similar to the one we did before. We search for valid entities on the game scene. Notice we are excluding the player. For this example, we will omit this type of collision. If a collision happens, we will indicate this bullet is no longer needed and has to be removed from the game. Finally, we will create a dispose method to free up resources. We will now add the shooting logic to the player tank class. The first thing we will do is to update the constructor to indicate the type of this entity. Now we are going to create a function that will spawn the bullet. The first thing we need is to calculate the shooting position. We cannot use the tank location because that would make the bullet appear on the center of the object. To fix this, we will add a small offset locating the shooting position ahead of the tank. The final position will be the tank's location plus the offset we just calculated. Do not forget to call the clone method. This creates a new vector and it prevents us from modifying the tank position. With the shooting position ready, we can now create the bullet and add it to the game scene. We now need to call this function. We will do it when the user presses the space key. We are almost ready to see the code in action. There is one more update to do on the player tank class. This is to update the collision detection to avoid the tank's own projectiles. If you run the game, you will now be able to shoot using the space key. Not only do we have this new mechanic, but we also have remove and dispose of elements that are no longer present in the game. Before finishing the video, I noticed I didn't call the shooting function using the correct await call. We should add it to correctly respect the bullet lifecycle. Although the goal of this lesson was to program the shooting mechanics, I wanted to show you how to implement individual life cycles to entities. This is a concept that could be useful for other types of games that require entities to be created and disposed dynamically. In the next video, I will show you how to create some fire and explosion effects using basic shapes. This will make the shooting a bit more interesting. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.